Okay, today we're going to take a look at making a lower third using Titler Pro 6. And in this case, we're going to use one of the built-in lower third templates. I'm working in Media Composer today. To start, I'm going to set up a second video track here and introduce a couple of razor points, roughly five seconds apart. And then I'll just select and right click to add a title. So we're in Titler Pro here. I'll hit F3 to close out the Object Attributes dialog so we have a bit more room for the project templates. And you can see that this is Titler Pro 6 Ultimate and it comes with a host of lower third templates. You can roll over these templates and get a preview of what it will look like in your NLE. And this uh, teal roll lower third I particularly like. So you can click on it and drag it right in or you can just double click to apply it. And immediately you'll see that it creates a three second long lower third with an elastic region in the middle. So because of the elastic region you can actually stretch this longer than three seconds and what it will do is it will basically give you the animation at the beginning and then hold the effect basically for however long this elastic region has to stretch to complete the full length of the title followed by the transition at the end. Okay, so let's look at some of the elements here. I'm going to use the little eye icon to turn all, all of these elements off and we'll look at them one at a time. We have the individual's name. And then their role, potentially. And we have a separator line. And finally we have a fancy, fancy rectangular segment that has some effects on it. You can see it sort of swishes in there's an animation effect applied through the duration and then a fly off at the end. And you can see by clicking on the little disclosure triangle, you can see some of the elements of this. So I'll, I'll push F3 again to show the object attributes. And now we can click on the individual effects and you'll see in the effects tab on the object attributes, you'll see the uh, parameters for each of these effects. Now I picked this template because I like this combination of effects and I wasn't willing to spend the time to try to compose this myself. You certainly can, but I thought what I'd do is start off with this template and then we'd sort of look deeper into how this template was built. So to do that, I'm going to turn off the effects and the transitions by going into the effects tab I'll just collapse this down and I'll actually just click the eyes on all three effects and then in the transitions tab I'll click the eyes to turn those off so now we're left with basically just the rectangle if I click over to the style you can see that the rectangle is actually a gradient I can click on the gradient color and see that it's made up of a a solid blue and a solid darker blue. And we're going to adjust those colors a little bit later here. You'll also see in the global settings that the opacity of this rectangle is set at 90% so you can see through it ever so slightly to the underlying video. The other thing you'll notice is that it's not a it's not actually a squared off rectangle and that's because the radius is set to 100. And by default when you create a rectangle the corners are squared off but you can round it as such. Give it sort of a pill shaped look to it. Anyway, this I don't really like the look of this blue so what I'd like to do is capture the color of the hat and use that instead just uh, to have it blend into this image a little bit better. So again, as I say, I have the effects turned off at the moment and the transitions makes it a bit easier to work with. So I can open up the uh, 
the gradient and I'm going to basically use the color picker to introduce both a darker and a lighter version of this sort of orange hat color. So with the darker selected, I'll grab the picker and I'm going to bring this up to roughly the luminance of the original blue. And now I'll do that one more time for the lighter version of this color. See where this circle is. I'm going to move it back up to there. Roughly. I just want to get roughly the same, same intensity. Um, you don't have to. You can give these whatever intensities you want, of course. And there's our gradient. Okay. Now this may be the only customization I do, other than actually entering in names and roles into the into the text boxes here. However, notice what happens when I turn on the spotlight. The reason for that is the spotlight actually, the, this template comes with a spotlight that is colored. And so if we look at the spotlight color, we see that it's actually yellow and yellow on top of this sort of orangey color gives us not the color we want. You'll also notice if you have a keen eye that the spotlight is using keyframes. You can see there's a keyframe at the beginning and a keyframe at the end and that basically in this case that's just sweeping the light, uh, the spotlight across the rectangle. However as I was playing with this preparing for the tutorial I noticed that these keyframes are actually malformed and they work fine for the for this um, template as it is but as soon as you try to change the template you'll notice that you run into some problems so I had to do a couple of things first I want to replace this first keyframe because for whatever reason I can't actually keyframe a new color for the for the spotlight with this keyframe so I can do that quite easily. I'm just going to stretch this back so I have a spot to place a new first keyframe. Just move it behind the keyframe and click the plus button. Okay, so there's my new keyframe. I'll go to the second keyframe and I'll just delete it. So I've basically replaced the first keyframe. And now with the first keyframe selected, I'll change that keyframe color to just, just a neutral color. That's fine. Now, in theory, I'd like to do the same with the end keyframe, but the end keyframe is not actually within the three seconds of this template. It's way out at the six second mark somewhere. So I'm going to increase the duration just temporarily. And now we'll just zoom out a bit so that I can see the, the seven second mark there. And I'll drag this out until I see the keyframe. There it is. So it's just under six and a half seconds. So I'm going to grab that keyframe and I'm going to pull it back within just below the three second mark. Then I'll return my timeline marker to the three second point and that will act as a snap location. So now I can grab this rectangle, bring it back and it'll just snap right to the location of my timeline marker. And now I'll return to the original duration and zoom back in again. Now that may seem like a little complicated and, and honestly it's a workaround to a bug that seems to be present. I'm just going to drag this back close to the end there. That's fine. So again back to the keyframes. I can now place myself successfully on the end keyframe and that allows me to click the spotlight color and correct it. So now we're seeing that this the color of the rectangle is not affected by a tint in the spotlight which is really all I was going for here. Okay, so now we can activate the shear energy and the reflection and get that nice interesting look but now with a orangey tint to it. Um, I have no trouble at this point in activating the smear transition that you can see kind of smears it into place. It's very nice. And the fly in which when placed at the end actually is a fly out. There we go. Okay. And actually, I'd like to show you one other thing because I thought this was kind of interesting. Maybe I will switch over, just set the view to background um, gray so we can see just the line. This um, 
this line is actually made from a rectangle and it's it has a uh, couple of characteristics it's got a fly hood at the end see how it flies off there and they've used keyframes to bring up the opacity so it's fully transparent and then becomes fully opaque by the time it gets to this keyframe you can see that when I show the style you can actually see the uh, I'm sorry it's done with the global the global opacity there is keyframed see as I bring that up the other thing that's very interesting I was I was looking at this thinking to myself that it was quite quite cool the way they had basically a feathering at each end and I wondered how they did this with just a it is just as I say it's just a rectangle well, the way they did it was they used a gradient and I'll just click on the gradient here and you can see what they've done is they've used a, a four color gradient and at the extreme horizontal edges they've gone with fully transparent and then as you come in they go to fully opaque this is also fully opaque and fully transparent again so you get that very nice feathered look on the edges so that's uh, that's pretty cool so they bring up the opacity there's your feathered look and then zoop, off it goes all right so let's um turn all of those back on and now I would come in and, and I'd want to edit this um, you you can double click right in a text box and then control a to select it all and then you can try to click another text box if you have some trouble clicking because the two text boxes are too close together you can select in the paragraph down in the timeline right click on it and and simply click edit text and now you can control or command a to select all and complete your text so there we go so now I'm just going to close this and keep those changes we're not actually done yet but uh, we're, we're close now in a previous tutorial I mentioned that with media composer there's a couple of things that you need to do so that you avoid the hassles of sort of glitchy frames that show up just in the in the previewing of your titles um, one of them is under the media cache settings make sure you've disabled media composers uh, video caching and in theory that should be good enough if you don't do that and then you do something like take the title and move it around a little bit and then play back Very through you can get uh, you can get sort of glitchy remnants of the cached frames showing up he's lyrically perfect everything he's ever done is just kind of like the beat so that looks pretty good however if I want to if I decide I want to make this lower third a bit longer Look, at, look towards the end at this sort of odd glitchy behavior you're going to see at this point. The B sides are hits. You know, it's funny. I, I'm not seeing it as much now, but when I was doing this before, I was seeing basically a, a stuttering effect. And I just discovered that it was because if we go back into the Titler Pro editor, Titler Pro does its own caching. You can look under title here. There's an enable cache for this title and only cache regions of interest. I was finding that I could get rid of the glitchiness by disabling both of these. And what this seems to do is it actually allows you to have more flexibility over moving this around. Study of Christofferson and that sort of open doors to Willie and then and very recently Basically, that smooths out the animation. Again, it seems that Titler Pro itself has some remnants of its own cache that it's using inappropriately. And I was seeing that as I was moving, for example, if I wanted to move, move the lower third around and change its start and end positions, slide it around a little bit, get the timing just right. 
Chris Christopherson at a very late age. He's lyrically perfect. Everything he's ever done is just kind of like the B-sides are hits. So I went into a big study of Christopherson and that sort of opened doors to Willie. And... Okay, so I think that pretty much wraps up this, this tutorial. Um, it was sort of interesting, I think, to take a look at one of their built-in lower thirds, see a little bit about how you might customize it. I didn't get into customizing the effect parameters themselves. Those can be kind of complicated, and I did play around with it a bit and thought it's probably worth its own tutorial. And there's just such a vast number of effects and combinations of effects that um, it, it really isn't something you can cover, cover in a single tutorial. But uh, this about wraps it up. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time. Bye for now.